Congressman Patrick McHenry here, um, and he's going to come to the stage, if you will, and please make a, um, a few remarks, a few closing remarks, so I can hopefully get everyone out here by 12. Uh, but let's just say then that uh, 
as Charlie Cook and Stuart Rothenberg and other nonpartisan analysts are, are saying, and pollsters are saying right now, that Republicans take the House of Representatives, U.S. House of Representatives, and, and come to near parity in the United States Senate, which would be a very dramatic shift uh, two years after uh, massive majorities, uh, uh, massive Democrat majorities were achieved in the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate. So if Republicans take the majority, I want to tell you what, what my party would, would seek. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, if the American people come out in sufficient form, uh, we could see uh, a massive majority in the House of Representatives that would favor full repeal. And I think you'll see early actions to fully repeal this law. Uh, however, in the end, uh, it's highly doubtful the Senate and the President would go along with that, as I mentioned. But there are other options as well. We can defund it. Uh, a good example of that would be uh, defunding the 17,000 new IRS agents that are needed in this bill to police compliance of the individual mandate. Uh, we will have that vote. We'll continue to have that vote until we can pass defunding that, that portion. Um, and obviously, uh, funding originates in the House and taxation. Uh, according to the Constitution, must originate in the U.S. House of Representatives, and so I'll, I think you'll see action on that. You can uh, dismantle it, which would be taking particular provisions of the health care bill and, uh, and, and taking it out. A good example of that would be the requirement that all businesses file 1099 forms with the IRS to report any purchases totaling more than $600 in a year. Enjoy sending that to Office Depot for reams of paper. Uh, we're going to see 1099s fly all over, uh, all over this country and burden small businesses even more. So we can take that piece out. These are just two simple examples. Uh, we can delay it. Uh, you can also postpone cuts to a very popular Medicare, Medicare Advantage program. Uh, you can postpone the mandate requiring that individuals and businesses purchase and provide health insurance. You can postpone the imposition of $500 billion in taxes required under this law. Those are simple, those are simple ideas. We can push back implementation date by a year. We can push it back by six months. We can legislate these things, and I think you'll see that action. Um, and the president won't likely sign this, uh, but could sign it as a compromise uh, when he's asking for other things from the Congress. The, additionally, the Congress has the power under the Congressional Review Act to disapprove of regulations. Enormous sections of this bill are yet to be determined because we have boards and commissions and appointees who are going to write the regulations for how this works. Uh, under the Congressional uh, Review Act, it gives Congress the authority to overturn regulations issued by federal agencies if both houses approve. You have to have a supermajority to do that, but particularly egregious uh, regulations will have the political will to overturn it. And finally, you'll have direct uh, oversight and investigation. The Congress uh, should uh, use its, its power to investigate and to bring to the American people's attention uh, the effects of this law on small businesses. And what we're seeing right now with the rate increases and uh, you know, in, in real access issues in terms of affordability, uh, the effects on small businesses. And so uh, pulling out this legislation and pulling out in, in, in particular certain parts of it that impact small businesses disproportionately, I think could build the political will to repeal those sections uh, and at the very least delay implementation of this bill now law. So I wanted to give you the options, uh, the menu of options, we should say, um, that really is not in the hands of the Congress, it's in the hands of the American people. And it's not simply this November's election where that will be impacted. You also have the 2012 presidential election. And with full implementation in 2013 and 2014, the next presidential election, not simply this November, but the next presidential election will be about health care. It will be about health care as a subtext of jobs. And the, the fact remains, when you raise the cost basis of employment, 
you get less employment. When you tell small businesses that we're going to raise your taxes and raise your cost of applying health insurance, it makes it very difficult for them to hire another employee. And so you'll see this discussion not just come this November and through this fall, but going through the next presidential election. And this truly is in the hands of the American people. We're a democracy. We're a democracy that allows for elections of people to make decisions. Therefore, we're a Republican form, a republic. So determining who goes to Washington is determined uh, by the folks that show up on election day. And that's our obligation to make our voices heard. This is not a pitch for Republicans. It's not a pitch for Democrats. Uh, it's a pitch for doing what's right for small businesses and for better access and affordable access to health care. And this is not in the, the hands of one party or another. If you want reasonable and good reform, you have to have a bipartisan majority for it. And I think that's what the American people uh, will say coming to this November and November 2012. And that's the discussion we need to have in Western North Carolina and across America as well. And that's what I wanted to leave with you. The debate rages on, and the debate isn't in Washington. It's here. It's here at home. It's among small business leaders, community leaders, not just chambers, but all of us in the county and in Western North Carolina. So the opportunity is ours. It is truly in our hands to determine the fate of our country. It's not a foregone conclusion. It's not a foregone conclusion. And so we need to make sure that we make our voices heard. And today is empowering because it gives us the context, the information, the knowledge that we need to effectively advocate for a small business perspective when it comes to health care. So thank you for coming. Uh, Lori, Danny, thank you so much for your leadership uh, on this matter and, and so many others. So with that, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. God bless you.